officially stressed out. Now let's screen you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> puns today. Uh, all right, so today we're going to get into uh, kind of the screen um, tensor or screen tensor notation. So let's go ahead and first we're going to get into a little bit of um, infinitesimal strain theory. Uh, take a bit of what you may, but again, let's let's kind of start from the beginning. So uh, when we exert some type of force or stress on a material, we're going to get some resultant strain. So strain is denoted by this epsilon. Uh, and again, generally, or the kind of the true strain definition is going to be this instantaneous, that displacement DL. So there's a certain initial length of our material. There's going to be some displacement DL. True strain, you would kind of integrate this function. Um, so again, just like for we had that true stress, which would be instantaneous area. We also have this definition of true strain. But typically, just like for we had engineering stress, force over A naught, the original area, we're going to deal most like most of the time with engineering strain. Uh, actually, all the time in this class, <laughs> which is just the change in length. So as we increase this material, as it shrinks, this kind of displacement, this L naught, that is going to, or this delta L, that is going to be our engineering strain. So our strain and this is just going to be this L. So again, initial length. Uh, that's all that we're kind of, you know, originally that we're working with here. Now, the key thing here, just like we saw that this denoted a normal stress. So normal, again, the force was normal to the plane on which it was acting. And we had a shear stress, which was uh, basically parallel. The direction of the force is parallel to the uh, plane on which it was acting. We also have definition of shear strain as well. So uh, we're going to work in micro strains, et cetera, et cetera. But we also have shear strain. So we have normal strain. And then gamma is going to be our shear. So our engineering shear strain is actually defined uh, as thus. So it's just as we kind of take this original block, this kind of red material here, and we shear it like this, and we can shear it like that. The you know, our engineering shear strain is going to be this change, this delta x, and then divided out by actually this y length here. So that is going to be kind of our shear strain definition. You could also get a material that yields like this. So forgive me here. As I draw a horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible example. But if I can draw let's see, this, this. You could have pure, uh, pure shear, which is kind of denoted right here, here. So this is supposed to match up right here and here. So again, I would have basically my total shear here. You know, again, in whatever direction this would be, kind of your again shear x y, and we're going to see that's equal to the shear y x a second. Again, because of this condition of uh, if our stress tensor is symmetric around this. So two, two, three. If our stress is here equal, we're going to actually, you know, then uh, if our stress tensor is symmetric around here, our strain tensor must be as well. So that's just some um, linear algebra for you. Yep. So we're going to see the same thing, and it just comes from these kind of linear elastic equations. They're going to have to be uh, because we're going to relate again, assuming our material is linear isotropic here to this. Uh, and some other expressions, actually. This is not the best one uh, to deal with. Actually, we're going to see some really complicated ones probably uh, coming soon in CIJKL. Now that's more like it. <laughs> uh, and actually, this could be 1, 2, 3, 4. We could just note that. Uh, these bars indicate the order or the rank of your tensor. So this is a fourth rank tensor. This is a second rank tensor. This has nine components. This is 81 components. We'll see that in a little bit. But anyways, the... Uh, Basically, when we're thinking about what is, this would be, again, still our, I'm going to call this my dx or delta x. This is my initial y. Here's my initial x here. And this is my delta y. So my total strain here would just be my delta x divided by my uh, y plus my delta y divided by my x. That's it. So that's your engineering shear strain. So life 
uh, and if you have just pure shear strain, you have kind of a similar proportional relationship, um, uh, and you could kind of relate this again if in pure strain, uh, shear stresses, uh, pure shear, pure shear stress, pure shear strain, you could relate this to the uh, shear modulus. But that's a little bit beyond kind of the scope of what we want to talk about. Now, we said previously, uh, and actually, you'll see that uh, our engineering. Uh, engineering stress was equal to our tensorial definition of uh, stress. So if I calculate my engineering stresses, my sigma 1,1, one, one, that's going to be equal to kind of my tensorial definition of sigma 1,1. Uh, one. And the same thing for my sigma 1,2 is equal to my sigma 1,2 in the tensorial definition. So that notation. So stresses were all fine. But unfortunately, we're going to have to invoke infinitesimal strain theory because there's an issue with our engineering shear strain and our tensorial definition of uh, shear strain. So this is not, these are not equal, whereas this was equal. These were equal in our kind of last discussion, but it is not the case as you're going to see here. So we're going to have to invoke um, basically infinitesimal strain theory. <laughs> so, um, so when you're thinking about infinitesimal strain theory, uh, X is just your axis dimension. U, there's this displacement vector. So there's actually a deformation tensor, a displacement, and then a tensorial uh, essentially definition of strain. So our tensorial definition of strain, epsilon ij, is just going to be this deformation tensor, ij plus minus, you know, 1, 1. So let's look at this example here. So this is my two axis. This is my one axis. So if I have a strain in this 2, 2 direction, so I'm pulling my material like this, I know that, okay, I'm going to have some, what is my, so I'm looking, trying to calculate my epsilon 2, 2. Well, that's going to be one half of my EIJ, so it's going to be my partial of the displacement U in the 2 direction. So it's displacing in the 2 direction. XJ is 2, so plus DU, 2, again, over, again, even though they change, I is equal to J. So it doesn't matter for this example, because we're going to see in a second. So for normal strains, this is exactly kind of what we recover. We know that it is just du2, excuse me, divided by dx2. Again, in general, I mean, this is just the same exact expression that we kind of looked at previously for normal stresses. If I just kind of rewrote this in terms of this is my, kind of my L1, and this is my L2, this is basically equal to delta L over L1. So for normal stresses, this is true. So my uh, normal definition is equal to my tensorial definition. So these are equal. But look at this definition and what it says. Let's look at if I'm doing epsilon 1, 2, which I like it to be equal to this, right? If my life was easy and I didn't have to kind of go through this annoying definition or this conversion from engineering shear strain to tensorial definition of shear strain. So this is not the case. Why is that? Because 1, 2 is equal to 2 times d of u1 divided by dx2 plus du2 dx1. So let's think back and let's go back to the example I just kind of drew up here previously. I wish I could kind of, I'm going to drag this the way I could kind of click. Drag this guy or erase. I'm learning on the fly here, so stick with stay with me. Oh no, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lasso. Lasso this guy. Ooh, I'm getting so fancy at uh, <laughs> remote teaching. <laughs> so let's look at this expression right here. Actually, let me create this. There we go. Ooh, lasso is going to be my new favorite. I'm going to lasso so many things. I love cowboy movies. Uh, anyways, so this is our definition of our tensorial definition of our shear strain. If we relabel this axis uh, here as just 2 and 1, this is just saying my uh, 1, 2, this definition of my engineering shear, shear strain in this notation is just going to be that displacement in 1, so my delta in my one direction, so delta u1. So again, if there's some displacement in the one direction, so instead of delta x1, I'm just calling it delta u1. 
delta u1 divided by my x, so or my one direction, excuse me. Or actually, sorry, this is going to be displacement. Yeah, in the one direction, I'm going to divide it by this, my length here. So I divide it by my x2, for example, plus my change in the two direction, du2, over my x1 direction. So essentially, it's the same kind of idea, but you see there's this factor of two, or this half. So you can see here that we're not equal here. And in fact, if we go back to this expression right here, we're going to see and find this relationship that here we are exactly fine. Like we are meeting this, and this is going to be equal uh, right here. But we're going to find this discrepancy. So effectively, my tensorial definition is going to be equal to one half of my gamma one two. That's it. So this introduces when we write our stress tensor. So again, nine components. Uh, but again, there are six independent. Why? Because we're going to need this relationship. We're going to, have to do linear algebra uh, on here. Actually, again, let me keep it the most general. C one two three four. Um, so here, we could kind of rewrite and, again, include this expression. So we're going to have to be very, 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 very careful because we're always going to kind of calculate shear stresses in terms of engineering shear stresses. That's the easiest way to kind of measure them. But when we plug them into our tensor notation here, we're going to be dealing with, again, we got to divide out by this factor of 2. So be very cautious when you're using kind of these expressions. Um, and we're going to get to kind of when we get into more circle and rotations, uh, that is going to um, cause some discrepancies when we kind of uh, do our full rotation. If you're kind of get it, trying to get the full, you know, tensor expression. So we'll come into that a little bit later on, but it's something very, very important to kind of uh, understand this factor of two that's going to appear. So in order to write our tensor notation of strain, we need to take our engineering uh, shear strain values and divide them by two. That's it. But it's just annoying. So we're going to have to introduce this Reuters matrix, uh, and there's going to be some other values that pop up. But we'll, 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 carry it. we'll get into that when the time comes. So next time, we're going to talk about Poisson's ratio. And yeah, uh, I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.